Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Chal Su Shen in the Department of Neurology at Mayo Clinic, uh, Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, today I would like to talk to you about uh, topics and issues very important to uh, women uh, with epilepsy. Uh, women obviously make up uh, at least half the population of epilepsy patients and uh, uh, young women uh, in uh, childbearing age uh, have an epileptic condition that can be a very uh, difficult issue and challenging issue. So I think it's an important topic many people have questions about. Um, first of all, uh, in terms of uh, before pregnancy, uh, there's contraception issue. Uh, birth control pills uh, that contain uh, ethnyl uh, estradiol, uh, which is a synthet synthetic estrogen, uh, can interact with uh, medications uh, that are used to treat epilepsy. Uh, a lot of epilepsy medications uh, induce the activity of the liver enzyme that processes uh, these hormones as well, and uh, therefore uh, contraception may not be as effective uh, when you're on medication for epilepsy. And therefore, that has to be uh, really carefully uh, uh, addressed by gynecologists as well as uh, neurologists taking care of uh, women. Uh, so uh, that is uh, doubly important because if you fail contraception, that usually means pregnancy. Um, there are other interactions that uh, synthetic estrogen can make uh, medications such as lamotrigine, which is uh, one of the common medications used, uh, get processed through the liver quicker so that you actually uh, may be more at risk for seizures if you start birth control pills while you're on lamotrigine. And that has to be uh, uh, carefully addressed and dosages adjusted. Now, uh, if you are planning pregnancy, uh, I think uh, that's the key. You have to plan. Um, we don't like uh, surprises and accidents, uh, and in some cases, if you plan the pregnancy, you may, uh, in some epileptic conditions, uh, be able to come uh, off the medication for pregnancy. Uh, that has to be very carefully considered with your doctor and neurologist. Uh, but uh, the uh, planned pregnancy helps because you can start taking prenatal vitamins with a high dose of folic acid. Uh, and uh, we do that because of the effects of these seizure medications on the fetus, the baby. Uh, as uh, the baby's brain develops and other organ develops, usually during the first trimester, these medications can uh, potentially have a deleterious effect, causing some malformations. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, usually too late uh, if you find that you're pregnant uh, while you're on medication, unplanned, uh, to come off the medication. Uh, and that's even uh, potentially more dangerous because if you stop your medication uh, suddenly, then that can result in serious seizure con uh, conditions. Um, if uh, you plan the pregnancy, then you could have some estimate of risks uh, depending on different medications, and sometimes medications could be changed. Uh, for instance, some medications are particularly prone to cause more uh, brain uh, malformations, uh, and uh, uh, that in particular is valproate uh, or valproic acid, commonly known uh, as Depakote. Uh, so if you're on that, then uh, you will need to really consult with your neurologist carefully before planning pregnancy. Uh, nevertheless, uh, if you're on uh, these medications, it does not mean automatically that you will have a deformed baby. Most babies actually uh, come out normal. Uh, it's just that statistically, uh, there are higher incidences of fetal malformation with these medications. The exact numbers may vary from medication to medication, uh, but it, uh, n naturally uh, it may occur uh, in about 2 to 3% of the population, 
uh, but uh, the medication may cause that to go up to 5 to 6 percent. And in uh, cases of valproate, that percentage may go up much higher. Uh, now, if you are pregnant and taking medication, uh, you have to actually be followed carefully throughout pregnancy because uh, the blood levels of the medications will change as you gain weight and as uh, the baby develops. And therefore, you will have to have the blood levels checked carefully and uh, adjust the dosages as needed. Now, uh, going off the medication is unwise, as we said, because having s frequent generalized convulsions during pregnancy uh, is actually uh, as deleterious uh, as some of the medication effect may be. Now, if you get to the uh, delivery time, that's obviously a very uh, challenging time, and uh, you need to start uh, planning on uh, uh, the care of the baby as well, uh, and as uh, postpartum care also, because you will be sleep deprived after the delivery, and you'll be going through a lot of stress during delivery. Um, and then you have to uh, consider the issue of uh, breastfeeding, and that is, again, best uh, discussed with uh, pediatrician and uh, obstetrician and your neurologist. Uh, in the past, uh, we had discouraged women from breastfeeding because uh, medications do go into breast milk and will be transferred to the baby through the milk feeding. However, uh, breastfeeding uh, itself has a very positive effect on the baby's development and uh, therefore uh, it is now more and more encouraged to go ahead and uh, breastfeed and even if you are on seizure medications. Uh, and uh, that uh, risk uh, will have to be uh, discussed with your pedi uh, pediatrician and neurologist as well. Uh, in some medications, uh, if you are on barbiturates or carbamazepine category medications, sometimes baby will uh, exhibit some withdrawal phenomenon, but uh, that has to be also uh, considered. Now, some of the uh, seizure medications, as we said before, induces uh, activity of the liver enzyme that processes some of the hormones and uh, vitamins. Uh, in uh, this case, vitamin K is also involved, so the obstetrician uh, and pediatrician will usually supplement with uh, vitamin K. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, you need a comprehensive care with high-risk obstetrician and uh, a pediatrician working with a neurologist uh, through this period. 